Good morning, America. <laughs> my name is Nina Bruton, and I am here to share with you all just a little bit about my father, Carl Lagan. It's um, June 14th, just a few days before Father's Day, and it is actually my third wedding anniversary. So I will be sharing with you all um, a couple of wedding photos of me dancing with my father. I will actually be reading an excerpt of um, my book uh, currently that I'm currently working on publishing, self-publishing. It is called Dramas of a Bald Head Queen. There's um, the poster up there. Um, and we're shooting to actually publish that by the end of July. This, this year, so... Um, this uh, particular part of the book I decided to share with you all because um, it is it is called In His Arms and I am a daddy's girl to the heart and like so many daddy's girls we loved being carried by our fathers and held in his arms and comforted when you know we were going through thunderstorms and uh, we'd fake like we were asleep in the car so that he'd have to carry us into the house. Carl is a man who doesn't sit still. He is constantly moving something, fixing, building, planting, or painting something, or going somewhere. His movements, movements are rarely in vain or out of any attention deficit, but he is always on the go. And because of this trait, he also expected the same from his two children. If he found that we had been cooped up indoors for too long in front of the television or in our rooms reading books, he would make us make a point to get make us get up and do something. <laughs> he did the same for all the neighborhood kids, rallying us up for a game of crochet, a ride in the retired ice cream trucks that we had somehow come to own, affectionately known as Tinkerbell, or even taking the blades off the riding lawnmower and letting us drive it up and down the street. Other times, he'd just take us for a nice walk around the block to burn off some energy and get a breath of fresh air. Anytime we'd be out walking after running behind my older brother and fighting to keep up with daddy's long stride, my small body would become overwhelmed with weariness, leading me to throw my arms up as if sending praises to God as I was reaching to the only God I'd never know, ever known at this point in my life. My father would reach down with love in his eyes and pick me up to carry me the rest of the way. But this could only last for so long. The time would quickly come that my father introduced me to the first harsh reality of this life. That he couldn't carry me always. Oh, never sounded so loud, ringing in my ears as I struggled to understand what he was telling me. No, sweetheart, you'll just have to walk. Had I been older and better able to express myself through words, I'm sure my exclamation would have went something like, Walk? But Daddy, I'm tired. And I've been walking. But instead, I settled for tears. I cried at the idea of going on when I was tired and chilled as I was this evening. No piggyback ride. No sitting atop the world on the shoulders of the strongest man that I know. Nothing. I recall how I felt at that moment, but as with most pain, do not recall how long it lasted or how long I cried. He assured me that I was a big girl and as usual loved on me just enough to calm me down, all the while sticking to his word. You'll just have to walk. He made me walk that night, but this is not the last time he'd ever hold me in his arms. On occasion, over the years, I would still get those piggyback rides, sometimes around the backyard while picking fruit off of a pear apple tree, or while lifting me higher than my four-foot frame would allow me to go as I reached for the next great read from the top bookshelf at the library. He always had a way of building me up to be independent while showing me how to help myself. However, was sure to assist me as he felt I needed assistance and only rarely GMA, when I ask. my father is one of the most amazing men that um, anyone will ever know. He is loving, he is kind, and I have watched him overcome great odds when it comes to <laughs> addiction with alcohol, 
and a number of other things that haunt a man just trying to raise two children all on his own. So he's not always been the best dad or so he thinks, but he's mighty and I love him. So thank you for allowing me to share my story with you. Thanks again.